Have you ever wondered how you actually create a full brand? You might have a logo or you might have an idea for a logo, but if you've been listening or watching my content for a while, you'll know that you need so much more. You need your font palette, you need your colors, you need actually a set of elements and a business and brand style you can actually apply for your graphics because it's all well and good to have a logo, but a logo is not going to help you design a social media post or your website graphics or your flyer. You can plunk your logo on there, but your business needs so much more than just a logo to, to, to connect with your audience, to create recognizability, to actually share a visual message. Now, if you're interested to know why you need that kind of thing, then feel free to watch any of my other videos. I go on and on and on about it. But today I want to get a bit more practical around how I actually go through and find these things. And I'm going to do a really condensed version of this today. Usually you would spend a little bit more time on this, but I want to do like a really snappy version showing you the kind of websites that I use, showing you how I kind of make decisions and showing you how I take a logo and actually create a full brand out of it. Yeah, I hope it's a little bit helpful and inspiring around how you can do those things. So if we haven't met before, my name is Jackie Norton and I am a graphic design coach that specializes in teaching business owners how they can create their own incredible brand and graphics with their own two hands using programs and free programs, just like Canva. Um, Canva is my jam. I love working in there. I, as a designer, I'm a professional designer. I'm proficient in all of the Adobe programs, but Canva is a really, really great tool, particularly for business owners who don't want to pay out the nose for Adobe and don't want to learn those hard uses. But Canva is like that perfect mix of just enough ability slash not too much ability that you don't need to learn everything and get lots of things wrong, but you can do some really great steps in the way. And so I want to show you how I I guess, explore a brand and actually put legs on it to actually create something that's actually practical to use as you're designing your business's graphics, not just, oh, I've got a logo. Now what do I do? Oh, that's a cool Canva template. I'll just use that. And then everything becomes incohesive, inconsistent, um, unrecognizable to your audience and unprofessional. And let that, today we're going to learn to fight that, those things. So on the screen, I've got a logo. This is a logo that I've created. It's just a mock-up logo. Um, and I wanted to use that as a bit of an example for if you're starting out with a logo. So lots of people go to a designer and they might get a logo, but they don't get too much more than that. Or maybe you've got an idea for your own logo and you might've created it, but you haven't actually put legs on what you're creating um, and made a full brand out of it. And so if you don't already have a logo, then this is kind of like the second step. The first step should probably be creating a logo. Actually, I would hundred percent recommend watching this first because this is going to help you I actually think that if you don't already have a logo, doing these steps first, I'm going to show you today, and then creating your logo can actually, or doing them in conjunction is actually a better process. And that's how I teach my co-creation club as my students in my programs. Um, the co-creation club, if you didn't know, is a 10 week intensive program where I work with people to help them design their own graphics. I don't do it all for them. They don't do it all alone. We do it together. We're co-creating. The doors are open right now if you're watching this at real time. Um, but I wanted to try to show you the steps that I kind of take my students on as we do those things. So this is good if you already have a logo and this is also good if you don't have a logo and I want you to keep do this process at the same time as creating your logo. Uh, one of the last tutorials that I released was on do's and don'ts around creating your logo in Canva so make sure you also check that one out or you can just work with me and I can show you the do's and don'ts and then you can just forget and avoid a lot of heartbreak so that's the dream. All right so We've got this logo. I haven't planned what I'm going to do with you today because I wanted this to be an organic thing where you actually got to see and understand my thought processes as we go, went along. Before we look at any sort of graphics, before we look at fonts and colors and all those things, we need to look at our wow. Now, I'm going to give you a resource today that I don't often share this deeply, especially for unpaying people, but a little little bonus if you're actually in this video and actually watching it. So well done for being here. I'm going to put a link in the description below, but pretty much this is the worksheet. It's called the wow model. So the wow model is what I teach and what I encourage people to think about as they're creating their businesses graphics. This is the best way to work out what your brand should look like, because there are so many things to think about when you're creating a brand. And this helps you work out the perfect culmination of all of those things. So you'll see here, I've got three circles. There's all your who, your originality and your why. Now there's a whole video and I'll try to link it here um, that goes into all of these sections. So I'm not going to go into the education of why all these things are important. I'm just going to show you how I got to the result of it and how I'm going to actually take the result of this and actually put legs on it for a design. So pretty much in essence, I want you to, to think through who 
does your business serve? What makes you tick? What makes you unique and original? And how do you want people to feel when they work with you? The perfect combination of those three things allows your perfect brand. Again, I've got a whole 20-minute video explaining this, so feel free to give that a watch. Um, or again, if you want to do this with me and have my help, then we can join the Color Creation Club and we can do it together. But this worksheet that I'm going to give you has three different pages that helps you kind of think through those kind of questions for yourself and build some clarity around each of the diff these different circles so that you can actually feel sure about what you're creating and what you're putting out there. So make sure you go through this document if you haven't thought about this kind of stuff before. And so in this last page that I've just showed you as well is a bit of, is, is I guess, the answers that this fake brand that I've created for um, Sun and Joy, what their business might be for their unique wow. So their who is mothers who run a heart-led small business and who want to appreciate their season in life. So they're busy mums, they're getting overworked in their business and they want to learn to be present with their children. So they're wanting some more grounding and some more nurturing, some direction in that. That's who this business works with. The, the person who runs the business, the, 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 the head honcho, the coach, they are relaxed, they love nature, they love sunsets, folk music and sand on their toes. That's a little bit of a summary of some of the things that they love. And finally, their why is they want people to feel nurtured, empowered, calm, clear clear calm and at home and those are the things that we'll be able to feel when they work with them so you can kind of begin to already see there's a bit of a picture coming together around what this kind of brand might look like the reason I say this is because this brand is not my brand I like you, you, you like when people work with me and might look at my branding like there's bright fun colors and all of this this amazing fancy funky design stuff they they might feel empowered but they're probably not feeling calm and they're probably not feeling nurtured because those aren't my key brand values but for this business business we want to make sure that we're really pushing pushing into these feelings, pushing into this, this kind of person as a target audience and pushing into representing themselves. Like when you look at my brand, you probably don't see folk music or um, nature. You probably see um, fun lollies and, 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 and theme parks. That's kind of more of the vibe that my, my branding has. Um, so how can we use these things to represent a brand? Um, and so I'm going to go into Pinterest now. And what you want to do is begin searching. Again, I've got a whole video on finding and creating yourself a mood board. So I'll link that here and you can have a watch of that. But I'm going to also skip this process and not give you a rundown tutorial of this because I want to get into the actual the finding of the graphics. That's the step that we're kind of up to now. Um, and so what you want to do is actually take some words from your wow model. So uh, relaxed, nature, sunsets, nurtured, empowered, clear, calm, and use those words to find graphics in at Pinterest. So I'm actually going to go to the search bar here and search calm graphics design and you'll begin to see some graphics here they're looking really calm you can see lots of blues you can see some oranges you can see um, clean text clean designs um, things that are mimicking nature um, and those kind of things so we're beginning to form a bit of a picture what if we try looking again at the wow and we start to think maybe is there anything else we can look at here nurtured empowered calm nature relaxed sunsets sand in my toes so maybe sandy kind of vibes what if i go um beachy graphic design what kind of thing pops up for me there we've got some nice oranges to mix sand some more oranges some more like earthy kind of tones um, some yellows some reds some oranges see i would have thought beachy would come up with blue kind of tones but you can kind of see here uh, in society I mean, we're leaning to more towards the oranges and the, the earthy colors which actually could work really well in with this idea of sunsets of um, calm of clear at home often the homes have more of an orangey warmy kind of vibe they want to we want to feel nurtured and, and 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 cuddled you know and so having those kind of vibes might work so maybe we look into some oranges maybe we look into those kind of things and so this brand already has their logo done which is also going to give us some direction about the decisions that we make here so Obviously here we've already made some decisions around the designer who's designed this, which in this case is me, but if you've had someone else design it, they've made some decisions around browns and oranges. So what we're going to do is lean into those things. Firstly, because we can actually see that that actually does work from the research we're doing inside Pinterest and the research we've done in our WOW model, these oranges and these browns are actually a good direction to go. They speak to this nurtured vibe. They speak to feeling at home. They speak to representing the, the business's owner of, of, of being relaxed and of, of loving nature and of sand. And so we can see that these things are coming together and if we look at our ideal client they're probably going to want something that that, that that feels these things that feels nurturing that feels um, empowered and that that helps them take them out of the business of their life and grounds them back down and these oranges and these browns and these calm kind of designs are doing just that so let's lean into that so what I'm going to do first is create a new page here now you can use I, I often share different um branding style guides and, and and mood boards and stuff that you can use but you can just start these from scratch too if you want to if I just press c on my keyboard it's going to insert a circle so I'm just going to make this smaller and duplicate this by holding option on my keyboard and dragging it out to create a few different versions so I'm just going to drag all of these and duplicate these 
you don't have to do it exactly the way I did. So I'm not going to go into a long tutorial of how I go through all of the tiny little bits that I'm doing. What I want to show you in this tutorial to not make sure it's two hours long is more of the, 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 the overall steps that we're doing here. Um, so I'm just going to create six circles. So whoever you want to do that. Firstly, I'm going to sample colors from my logo. So because this logo was made in Canva, I've actually already got the colors. You can see if I click on this circle, the colors are already popping up here. But if I didn't already have the colors, what I can do is click on my circle click on my color here, press this little plus button, and down here you'll see this eyedropper tool. This is gonna help me to select any color from any image or any graphic that I have. So I'm gonna click this, hover over the yellow, and you'll see that it's now applied that same yellow to that circle. This is a fun hack, I was doing this for a client today. If you need to know the hex code for this color, you can find it just here. It's already there. You don't have to go to use a third party software to find it. It's already here after I've pressed that eyedropper tool. So I'm gonna go through and do that again with my brown. Again, eyedropper, hover over the brown, and we've got a color going there. So those are the only two colors used here. So usually I recommend having more than two colors in your color palette. But the main way I'd like to do this is, the two ways I like to do this is by finding inspiration on Pinterest, and by creating variations of the colors I already have. So I'm gonna do those both things today. I'm gonna to go here and search, um, trying to work out earthy color palette. You can see some lots of browns coming up or lots of oranges and yellows in this one. I think I'm gonna to go towards and leaning into the yellows. I could add in a different color. I could add in it maybe an earthy green or a red. That could work as well because they're in the kind of the same color, color kind of family. You can see here, we've got lots of greens. We've got, we're such only get a couple of different reds. Um, and so thinking about, What's gonna work for what I want my business to represent? Always bringing your mind back to that wow model will be so, so helpful for you. Um, so I can see lots of greens, um, lots of oranges and yellows. For um, a DIY, if you're planning on DIYing all of your business's graphics, I actually recommend to my students most of the time to keep your color palette more simple. The more complicated and more, more colors you have in your color palette, it can absolutely work and look good, but it is harder to design because not all of your colors go together and it gets, you have to have, create like little rules for yourself around what colors you're gonna use where. But if you only have a minimal color palette, it's less hard to create those designs, although sometimes it feels a bit limiting. So work out where you kind of sit up. If you wanna have lots of colors and learn how to use them well, or if you're not really sure and you kind of just want to keep it really simple to make it easy for yourself. So for me, I think I'm not going to bring in a green because it's quite contrasting and a bit harder for a DIY to work with, but I might bring in a red. So what I'm going to do is go down here and scroll until I find ah this one here. This is kind of what I wanted to go for. It's got a little bit of playfulness to it because a business owner and a mom is probably feeling like they, she wants to bring some playfulness back into her life. So that could suit a little bit, but it's also got that nurturing vibe. So what I'm going to do is actually just right click on here and press save image as, um, just save it to my computer and then upload that into Canva. So I'm going to go back into here, drag this picture into my Canva here and insert that in. And then once you insert the color palette that you found on Pinterest, you can actually begin to then sample that. So you actually can see that this brown is pretty much identical to the brown I already had, which is helpful. So I can click on this next circle and I can select my color picker and choose any of these colors that I'm, that I'm vibing with. So I'm gonna choose that one. Might also choose the more ready one. Might also choose the orange here and begin to get an idea. Now you don't have to use all six colors. You could have nine colors. You could have three colors. It's totally up to you. But what I like to do now is actually now play with these colors, see if they're exactly what I want. And I might actually even create another color here. I'm actually gonna select my brown. And then if what I do is I can go to this section here and I can drag this little circle up and to the left and it's gonna create a softer and lighter version of that color I had. And so that's just a really great way to create variations of the colors you already have. So this is looking really lovely. For me though, I think this orange is a tiny bit too bright. So I'm gonna just make that a touch more earthy by bringing it this way a little bit and making it a touch darker there. Um, and that's really coming together nicely. Now, you can't know that a color palette is gonna be right for you until you actually try it on designs in the future. I'm not gonna go into that today because it's probably getting a little bit too far into things. But in essence, before you commit to a color palette, maybe open up some Canva templates, apply your color palette to it and see if you can actually make it work in reality. Do you actually need in reality, if I just duplicate this, a really dark brown to kind of really pull things together and have a color for maybe your text or your headings? Do you need a really soft, if I bring this down again, do I need a really soft, um, opaque kind of color to use as a bit of a soft background color? Um, do I need a darker pink version? So think through those things and what you actually do need in practicality, because sometimes people just stop at like two colors and then they, when they get to design the graphics, it feels really restricted because there's not enough variation. So once you've got a bit of a color palette you're starting to enjoy, try to apply that to a Canva template or two and see if the, it actually works. Do you need a lighter version or a darker version or a different color there? But I'm gonna stop there for now and move on to our fonts. So again, when you, if you've already got a 
logo design, the fonts thing is really actually quite simple because right here I can actually see I've got printed moments as a font and I've got um, Bond Bodoni Sands as a font as well. And I've also got just Red Hat Display as a font. And so as a business, I only recommend, again, I've got a whole video on fonts that you can look at to learn more about this. But in essence, I recommend only using two to three fonts as a business because when we use more fonts, a design, again, just becomes harder to make, harder to make cohesive because you've got too many fonts fighting for attention, too many fonts trying to share their own brand, their own unique voice. Um, and there's just too much going on. It becomes too busy. And so three fonts max is a really great idea. And you can see here, this one here is quite interesting and um, fun. This one here is more simple, but got a little bit of personality. And this one here is nice and clean and crisp and really great for body text and some more just longer sentences and so I'm just going to copy these and use these as my font palette so I'm going to open up a new page here and just paste in my text I'm going to use this one and say um, heading font like so I'm going to do subheading and I reckon that can be in either capitals or lowercase and I can do body text here and I think that can be in uppercase or just sentence case and you can see there's a bit of spacing actually here applied so yeah. I really recommend for all body text to not have any spacing between the letters. Um, it just becomes harder to read. But when you're doing like a little bit of an accent or something a little bit fun here, then having this text spaced out in capitals can create a more modern vibe. So those are what I'm going to work in is my fonts. Now, I know I didn't spend too long on that because I want to move on to the elements next. But if you want some more help with fonts, make sure you watch that video I've just linked. All right, next up is elements. So many people disregard elements. I'm going to show you here. When I create any of my graphics, I go to this folder that I've saved inside my Canva that literally has about 20 to 50 different elements that I use for my graphics. I have different little doodles and illustrations. I have different little blobs. I have different backgrounds. I have different clouds, um, different balloons, different my, my, my little mascot. I've got all these different graphics that actually help me create those the, the full expression of my brand. It doesn't just stop on my colors, my logo or my fonts. It's expressed in the whole brand. And that just really helps your designs to be so, so consistent because like if I just grab, for example, if I add a page here and I just quickly go to templates here, I could say grab this design and I could instantly say, all right, I'm going to make this into my brand. So I'm going to pretend this is White Deer brand. I'm going to delete all these elements because they are not mine. I'm going to make the brand background into my color. So say, for example, my colors are here. I'm going to make it my purple. All I do is then go to my brand elements folder. I say, cool, I want to add a cloud in here. Um, I'm going to add in one of my little circles up here, maybe my little bubble here. And in two seconds, this is already matching my brand because I have made a decision around what my brand elements are and how I can utilize those all the time to create my graphics. And so creating brand elements can be really, really helpful, but I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna try to do a bit of a stripped back version for what I'm gonna show you today because your brand doesn't have to be as wild and playful as mine. You can still have a minimal brand and have brand elements. You might choose to use a checker pattern or you might choose to use really dainty illustrations. You don't have to have anything wild, but if you have even just a couple of elements or you even decide my elements are lines, like some of my clients just have like their branding is say, say if I do like a really nice blue color here um, and then I put a line on it and I just make that a beautiful dainty thin line. And then I might put, if I just grab some text here and make this in even just white, you can see that this brand is still beautiful, but that line, that's what's making it. Or I could even just grab, like, say I could apply the line in a slightly different way of doing like an outline of a box. Again, really, really simple and thin um, and crisp and clear but it's, it's the way that that brand looks is it's doing thin lines. And that, that could be as simple as what your elements could be. That's fine. All, it, all I want to make, make sure you do is you make a decision around what those are going to be. And so again, to do that, I recommend going to places like Pinterest. Um, say if I search um, uh, warm graphic design, because we've started to create a bit of a warm feel for our Sun and Joy brand. You can see we've got some beautiful illustrations here. We've got this checker kind of idea. We've got beautiful illustrations here, um, kind of more cute, cute kind of little wobbles, um, cut out kind of looks, um, maybe more of a, of, a, of a 70s retro vibe. There's so many different things that we can kind of begin to see. Ah, there's some patterns going on here. So for me, I kind of love um, maybe even this kind of thing with the checkers and maybe some cute illustrations, or we could do something um, that's got more of these blobby kind of illustrations, or we could do something that's got more of like particular um, like these kind of here's the ones moving more into sun, which kind of also brings into our nature. So doing some searching like this and, and looking, if you've done that mood board tutorial, looking at what you've pinned in your mood board and seeing what's kind of the patterns going on here. How can I actually create something that's using what I've pinned as inspiration? So what I recommend doing is then finding some elements on Canva or and some external websites and purchasing those. So say, for example, if I go into here, I'll delete these two pages because they are not our new brand. I'll add in a new page. I could even go into to Canva, for example, and search um, 
gingham. Gingham is, I think, a bit of a pattern that, that, that is quite popular right now. And we could actually apply our color palette to it to create a really cool idea um, and a really cool vibe. So say if I just import this one, what you want to do when you click on a design is just wait a second to see if Canva brings up um, some colors to change here. You can see here this one didn't. I'll wait until I show you one that does so you know exactly what I'm talking about. So if I click this one, is it going to do it? You see here that this is now giving me the option to change colors. So I can actually apply my brand colors to this really, really simply. So this could be one that I might choose to use or I could go. Um, now when you're doing this, I want you to kind of just put a lot of things there, like anything that you're kind of thinking that might work, plop, plop it on here and see how it feels. And then later on, you can kind of refine it down and see what you can create. Um, so if I search um, checkers, I don't know if that will work either. See if there's anything that goes on here. Um, this kind of vibe could be cute, although it might be a little bit trippy for the nurturing kind of vibe that I'm wanting, wanting to portray. Maybe I could do a really clean one or maybe I could do a really like organic one. You can see this one's got more, more wobbly lines than it does um, more structured lines. And so thinking some of those things through, I'm going to leave all those there just so I can make some more decisions later once I've started to put together our elements. Another website that I love to use is called Creative Fabrica. And one of the reasons I love this one is because it's so cheap. Like it is so affordable. There are some other ones that I also use, but they're a little bit more expensive. Um, and so this one, if you are starting out and you want more of a budget for your business, then it's a really great affordable website to use. So again, I'm going to search on here. I haven't pre-searched any of these. So I'm not sure what's going to come up. I'm going to search sun illustration, and that could be something that we could look at here. This one here is kind of cute. Um, I want something that's kind of more upmarket, so probably less cartoony and more um, more kind of like this kind of vibe would be a really great direction or even this kind of vibe could suit or these are maybe working. And so what you can do is you can just scroll down here until you find kind of the graphics that might suit you. And sometimes it takes a little while to get your searches right and to find the kind of, right kind of thing. One of the things I love about this website is that it's just a continuous scroll. Um, some other websites I use, you have to like click to the next page, click to the next page, click to the next page. And it like gets a bit tedious, but this one I can just keep scrolling. This image here could be really great. I'm just gonna click and open that on a new tab and I'm gonna keep on scrolling, keep on scrolling. This one here, I think it's by the same person. So that's really great. Something you wanna think about when when you're putting together your, your brand elements is they have a similar vibe or same style. Like if you're pulling together like five different illustrations, say of a sun and of a tree and of a cloud, you want to make sure they have the same illustration style so that they look really cohesive together. And again, it's kind of like when you don't want to have too many fonts, you want the design to feel really cohesive and like it's got the same uh, look and the same vibe and the same message to it. Um, all right, let's create some other search terms as well. Um, I'm going to go back to Pinterest to get some more ideas. So I've already, I've tried the sun kind of idea. What else could we do? What else could we do? Maybe some more blobs. Um, I'm going to search things like these kind of designs to see if I can find some kind of blobs to work with. Um, so let's go back to here. So you can see here you can search fonts. So if you haven't found a font that you like on Canva, you can actually download a font from somewhere like Creative Fabrica and then load that into your Canva if you have Canva Pro. And that means that you can have a font that's a lot more unique than what you might find inside Canva. And you can, you've got a lot more wide range to choose from. So you can choose um, a, a better a more more suitable font for your business. Um, I'm just going to show you now. So say if I go to script fonts, um, what you can actually do is you can search you can just scroll down here if you like, yeah, I want a script font or you can search like a particular sort of font, like a sans serif font or a bold font or a feminine font, whatever you kind of want. But say, for example, I like this one. What I can do is then click on that font and then just double check that it's kind of the right things for my need. So what you can do here is you can preview your font. So what I recommend doing, especially when you're choosing a font for your business is making sure it looks good in the words that you want. So for example, um, for, for Sun and Joy, I would search Sun and Joy and I would search the person's name who runs the business. So for me, I'm going to search Jackie. Um, and you can see actually these look really great in this font. I say this because in the font that I use for my own business, I don't love the J, which is annoying because I, Jackie is a word that I would like to use regularly in my business. Um, and so just check that it looks great. And if you actually want to test the font, what you can do is you can zoom in a little bit, take a bit of a screenshot and you can actually then pop that into your Canva so if I go over to here, just drag in my screenshot um, and then you can just see like, is this font working with the kind of vibes that I'm going for? You can even remove the background. Um, you could use the duotone feature to change the color of it just to kind of see that it's working before you commit to purchasing that font. So that's a really great tool and way to, to find kind of fonts. Anyway, I got distracted from elements. Let's keep searching elements. Um, what if I search um, blob, organic, organic blob, not, not blog, although blog could work, but I'm going to go organic, organic blob or shape, maybe even shape. That could be a little bit more specific. Oh yes, we're starting to get some ideas here. Starting to get some ideas. So some of these could be really, really great. 
these, these patterns could really suit. Um, and so kind of, you can kind of see how you can begin to form a bit of a picture and an idea around what you want based on your Pinterest search, based on your wow model and based on your designs. Now, what I recommend is finding elements inside um, Creative Fabrica or wherever you're searching that have what's called an SVG file. Oh my gosh, I love these ones. Um, I'm going to go this one here and then click on that. And what you want to find is an SVG file. So you see this one here does not come with an SVG file, which is a real bummer um, because I flip and love these designs. They have a real modern vibe to them, um, but they're still really organic and, and more nurturing in their vibes. Um, so that could be an option, but you can see here, say with this, the sun here, um, it has a, if I scroll down, it tells me what font, what font types it's in. So if you see here, you receive SVG files, PNG files, and EPS files. If you're in one of my programs, I'll have explained all these file types to you. But in essence, yeah, there's two sorts of files in, in design. There's pixel-based files and there's vector-based files. For creating your graphics and especially your logo, you want vector-based files. But if you can if you can help it, using SVG and vector-based files inside Canva is really great because it means you can change the colors. So these ones here, this was a vector-based file because I can change the colors. It was probably an SVG file. So if you can actually purchase SVG files, that means you can load them into Canva and make them whatever color you want. Whereas if I use this one and load in one of these files, I won't be able to change the color to whatever I want. So what you could actually do if you wanted to use this one is you could download this file and you could upload the SVG file into a website called picksvg.com and when you go into picksvg.com it actually makes your designs into an SVG file so that could be a really great option if you really can't find the SVG file of a graphic pack that you're really interested in um, but at the same time you can even ask a designer to quickly change this for you. Or if you have a program like Adobe Illustrator, you can just quickly change the file format because EPS and AI are still really great vector files. It's just not the file type that Canva loves. Um, so that could be a, a great option for you. Um, but for me, for example, I could download this sun. So I'm just going to download this. And because I have Creative Fabrica's membership, I can actually download as many images as I like. So I'll just actually show you. It's pretty cool. I've got a link below that you can check all this out with. But if you, you can sign up for free for it and you can get 10 images 100% for free, which is so flipping great. And then after that, it's only $9 a month, which is normally $29 a month. But if you use my link, you can get it for $9 a month. And you can access thousands and thousands and thousands of images, fonts, photos, anything that you kind of want. They've also got some really cool AI things as well if you want to check that out. And there's heaps of different options. You can actually download all these things um, so much cheaper than so many other websites. And what it means is that one, you're not just using Canva elements that everyone and anyone can access. And two, you're actually, you're owning these graphics. They're not just sitting in Canva. Um, and they're, they're different to what everyone else is doing. And you've got a wider range of graphics to choose from. So this is a really, really great option. So feel free to explore this membership and, and have fun exploring because what I find when you have a membership like this is it means that you can just really test and create things rather than like, oh, I've, I've got like, I've got to use my $20 on this perfect decision and it must be the perfect decision. Whereas if you have this membership, you can just download it, check if it works, use it a few times. And if it's not working, try to find something different that you can commit to instead. So it's just a really practical way to, to have a wide range of options for your business um, and not have it costing you too, too much because it can add up really quickly. Like some other websites I use, this sun would have cost me, the sun that I've just downloaded would have cost me about $20. And then if I download downloaded it and then it wasn't right. And then I had to download a different one. Whereas here you can kind of just download as many as you need to and work out what works for you and have a wide range to choose from as well. So I'm just going to unzip this sun image that I've got just, just downloaded. And then I'm going to drag that into my Canva. So, so I just want to show you here, it comes with a few different files. So it told me that it came with a few files. The one that I want to use inside Canva is the SVG file. So I'm going to drag that into my Canva and hope that it's a good version. So drag, 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 load, load, load. And now I've loaded that into my Canva and you can see that it is a beautiful crisp quality because it's an SVG file, it's a vector file, which is wonderful. And you can also see I can change the color so I can make this into my brand color. And I've got this beautiful brand element that I can now use. And so what I'm going to do is go in here. And so I could also then download this different version of the sun image that might work for me as well. And if I want to find more from this designer, again, I can just press view profile here and there's lots of different options for me in there. So I can kind of just scroll here. I can kind of do more of a search within. So if I even search sun or I could search moon, I can see all the sun different versions that she's got. Like maybe this little bee could be super cute on my brand or maybe um, a little moth or a little moon or like there's so many ways that we can kind of just dig in deeper. And what it means when you find the same illustration straighter is you're more likely to find the same kind of graphic style. Um, so I could even, or I could even search like line illustration here. Cause that's, we've kind of got more of a line, um, black and white illustration. If I could search that in my search, then it'll come up with this kind of one. And I could see lots of more basic kind of illustrations that might also match my son. And so just trying to find 
styles that work with each other. But what I could do and I think would work nicely for me is having like this sun illustration, but also some more um, blobby elements in the background to kind of bulk things out. So I'm going to try to find some elements that have that, that come in the SVG file. So I'm just going to click around for a little bit and see if I can find an SVG version. All right, I found one. So this one here, Boho Contemporary Shapes. This has, and it says it comes with an SVG file. And because I've got my all my downloads that I can just use endlessly, I'm then going to download this one and try it out in my Canva design. So when I unzip that file, you can see I've got my PNG files, which is just the individual illustrations, but I've also got a file for the SVG. So I'm going to open that up and that's got all of these different little, little illustrations as one file. So I'm going to actually just pop all of those into my Canva and load those in and it's going to bring them up. And hopefully when I put these into my design, I'm going to be able to change the color of them. So I'm going to click on one of these and insert it and I have to wait until it finishes uploading. So you see here that while edit image is grayed out, it's not quite finished uploading and because I did so many, it's taking its sweet, sweet time. So you see that I've inserted this one. I've got the option to change the color. So what I'm going to do is change these to have my brand colors on it. Maybe this one, maybe my yellow. And I can start to begin to see a bit of a picture of how things are coming together. Um, so whether I, I can even, I can probably put some of these together or if I was like, oh, I'm not feeling this or I'm not feeling the gingham style, I could totally delete it. So what I'm going to do now is just do a bit of a test of my graphics. I'm going to fill this background with one of my brand colors, maybe more of the soft yellow. Then I might bring in some of the different elements that I've chosen. So maybe some more of the lobby kind of ones. Again, make this some of the brand colors I have chosen. I could pop that over maybe in the corner here something a little bit subtle, maybe this one as well, because it's a little bit more subtle. I can make this my kind of off-white color that I had chosen, maybe make that a bit bigger, sit it inside there. And maybe I'll go grab some of my text. So if I grab this and this, even just having it like this is good enough. I could add some, add some dummy text in there if you wanted to as well. Um, pop that here and then continue to play around with these graphics. I want to zoom out a little bit so I can see the graphic as a whole. All right, let's try out some of these patterns. Maybe even just this one here, paste that in and make that really large. And what if I make that some of, my, some of the brand colors again, but really subtly. So maybe just the yellow and maybe the off yellow. So it kind of just really fades into the background. That's looking kind of cute. Maybe getting a little bit busy. So maybe do I make that a bit smaller or do I bring it off to the side or put it down the bottom, bring it over here and kind of see how you can kind of play around and see if things actually work in practice. Because sometimes you're like, oh, that totally won't work. Or then you're like, you put, you put it in here. You're like, actually somehow that, that worked a little bit. So maybe I pop that there add in maybe one of my I could I could try the sun although I'm wondering if it's going to get too busy although the sun kind of because of its daintiness kind of mimics the vibe of the font and so maybe if I use that really subtly next to text or as kind of a little not like as a giant element like I am with the other things but making it more of a dainty element um, that kind of mimics the vibe of the text it could suit my brand a little bit so I could pop that there maybe bring in one more element in this top right corner to to even things out what if I just grab this little vase maybe even just make it bigger so it's kind of more of a just a, a vague element maybe mimic this color on this side to kind of calm things down note that didn't work maybe bring it the, the, the yellow different kind of color play around with what works we can begin to see our colors in action now too that's not perfect yet but you can kind of see how it, things kind of start to come together and we pull different elements together and we pull different fonts different colors together and so as you're creating a brand I want you to, 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 to think of it as more than a logo or think of it more than your colors more than your more than your more than your fonts and think about what elements can I introduce to bring this in and you can use the Canva search to find your own different brand elements you can use websites like Creative Fabrica to find your elements and just kind of create this full picture of a brand that's that's beyond the colors beyond the fonts and so when you're finished so say for example I like I decided that I like these ones I might delete that one maybe delete that and think all right I'm going to make this one into my brand color so that that looks really um, consistent then I might bring in um, some of the different elements that I was really enjoying and pop them into the design so say if I grab this one make it my brand color and I just create a bit of a, a, a bit of a page kind of showing off some of my elements and then when I was happy I could even just grab these what I what you can do is you can hover over an element that you've uploaded press these little three dots and press move to folder and you can create your own folder like I have that has my brand elements in it. Or if you have Canva Pro, you can use the brand hub to, to upload all of your SVG elements into the brand hub icons and elements section. And then you can access it all in there as well. So have fun playing, have fun exploring, use Pinterest, use Creative Fabrica, use your brand wow and explore your whole brand. And that way when you're creating your graphics as you go, it'll be so much more cohesive, so much quicker to design and so much more fun. Um, and I wanted to let you know that if you're ready to explore this stuff but you'd like my help to do that I know that I made this look really easy and it's because I've done it hundreds of times and I would love to help you and your brand with it too I'd love to help you explore your wow I'd love to help you explore how you can actually pull together more than just 
a cool logo, but a full brand that's going to be so, so beautiful and help you to create your logo if you need to do that. I want to help you work out your fonts, work out your color palette, explore the right elements and learn how to use them together. Learn how to use design principles to pull everything together so it looks clean, professional and is starting to bring you income, clients and money into your business. So thank you for watching this one. Make sure you hit subscribe if you're interested in learning more about branding and design and business. I have tutorials coming out every single Friday and branding and design tips and interviews coming out every single Tuesday. So thank Thank you for joining me. I hope that's been helpful and make sure that if you're interested in joining Creative Fabrica that you jump on that discount code I have below to grab $9 a month for endless resources that you can possibly imagine plus that free trial for 30 days as well. So thank you for joining me and I will see you next week for another episode. Bye.